So are you totally confused about milk or dairy? If it is good for a woman with PCOS, do an internet research and I'm sure you are bound to come with conflicting viewpoints as to whether dairy should be taken by a woman with PCOS or not. The mention of milk actually takes me back to my childhood when my mother used to cajole me and my brother to drink a glass of milk twice a day. We were told that milk is going to make us physically and mentally stronger, even according to Ayurveda. The milk is supposed to be sattvic in quality. Milk has got medicinal properties. It is supposed to be so divine that it is part of the Panch Amrits, which is the holy offering to the deities. So what's going wrong? So hello everyone, this is Dr. Anjali Kumar, once again bringing you greetings from Maitri. Maitri is a space where we talk anything and everything about women's health. So continuing with our PCOS series, today in this video we will try and find out whether dairy is good for you or not, what does the research say and so on. Milk is a complete food. It is a source of high quality protein and it contains many micronutrients like calcium, magnesium and phosphorus. The protein in the milk is of a very high biological quality. It contains practically all the amino acids which are required for the growth and the repair of the body cells. No wonder milk has been revered by the moms and the grandmoms and the medical fraternities as a complete food. But then why are so many people switching to plant-based milk-free diets? So many athletes, sports persons and bodybuilders have actually reported improvement in their health and their performance after they have switched to milk-free vegan diets. So what are the medical problems with the milk? We all know about lactose intolerance. There are many people who are lactose intolerant. They may have nausea, bloating, pain abdomen, diarrhea. Milk is also a rich source of saturated fats leading to weight gain. Nowadays, there is research coming up which is linking milk and dairy products with acne. Milk is supposed to increase the levels of insulin growth factor leading to high insulin levels and high androgen levels in the body. Milk is also known to stimulate the production of dihydrotestosterone DHT which further causes oily skin, acne and increased sebum production. Most of us are dependent upon the commercial dairy supply for our dairy needs, uh, whether it is in form of the tetra packs or milk pouches or the loose supply given to us by the vendors or the big dairy giants. The animals in these uh, commercial dairy farms, they are given seeds which are genetically modified, they are given frequent antibiotics to prevent infections, they are given synthetic growth hormones to make sure that the fat content in the milk is more, they are given oxytocin injections to increase the milk supply. Also, the use of Biotechnology and the crossbreeding also changes the genetic structure of the milk. After that, the preservatives, the additives and the enhancers are added to increase the shelf life of the milk. The synthetic versions of vitamins and minerals are added to the milk. To make the milk low fat or skimmed milk, they actually strip the milk of all its nutrients and later probably just add 1 or 2% of fat to make it skimmed milk. The pasteurization and homogenization, they change the fat and the protein structure of the milk. Now let's talk about the A1 and A2 milk. So A1 milk is the milk which comes from the cows of the western origin like Holstein, Friesian and Jersey cows. These cows actually give a higher yield of milk almost to the tune of 35 to 40 litres per day. 
while the A2 milk comes from the cows of the Indian or the South Asian origin like uh, these are the desi cows like ghee and sahirwal and they typically give lesser amount of milk almost to the tune of 7 to 8 liters only per day so the milk which comes from both the types of cows actually is coming from the same source but it differs in the chemical composition so the difference in the chemical composition is of a protein called beta casein a1 milk has got A1 beta casein while A2 milk has got A2 beta casein. It is said that when the A1 beta casein gets digested in the body, it actually releases a compound called BCM7 which is the culprit for many health problems like acne, eczema, asthma, pre-diabetes, diabetes, insulin resistance, PCOD. So many studies nowadays say that consumption of A1 milk may not be very safe while consumption of A2 milk may actually be safer. Then coming to the controversy about whether I should take the skimmed milk or I should take the full fat milk. Now many studies actually say that consumption of low fat or skimmed milk actually leads to increase in insulin growth factor, increase insulin levels and increase androgen levels leading to more acne and more hirsutism. In fact, the full fat milk is associated with the better ovulation rates and the less incidence of the acne and hirsutism. But what about the milk products? We need to understand that we also get our daily dairy intake from many other sources like paneer, curd, cakes, ice creams, cookies, biscuits, salad dressings, sour creams. So we need to be vigilant and aware even if we are not drinking our glass of milk. So what are the alternatives? Almond milk. This plant-based alternative is lower in fat and calories than the cow's milk. The coconut milk, it's a tropical drink made with coconut flesh and water, has got a distinct flavor and a very creamy texture. Cashew milk, cashews and water combined together make this rich creamy milk which has got a very nice nutty flavor. Soya milk, it has got almost the same amount of proteins as the cow's milk. Hemp milk. This is made with hemp seeds and this is a wonderful plant-based alternative to the cow's milk. Oats milk. This is a mildly sweet uh, milk of a thicker consistency and it works very well actually with the coffee. Rice milk. Uh, this is the least allergenic non-dairy milk works best for those people who have history of allergies and sensitivities. But what about the calcium? Women need about 1000 mg of calcium every day. There are lots of wonderful non-dairy uh, sources of calcium. The almond milk, hemp milk, cashew milk, coconut milk, rice milk is serve as fruitful alternatives. Vegetables like kale, broccoli, pak choy, uh, Chinese cabbage are excellent sources of calcium. Seeds like chia, sesame and flax seeds and even quinoa are very good sources of calcium. So what are the final takeaways? So number one, try to follow a low commercial dairy diet in case suffering from PCOS and insulin resistance. In case you can't do without milk, try to switch to A2 milk and try to take a full fat milk. Avoid skimmed fat milk or low fat milk. Try and explore and switch to plant-based milks. Also do research to find out organic dairy or milk sources where the animals are not subjected to inhuman conditions, they are not given synthetic hormones or oxytocin injections. A lot of research, especially randomized controlled trials are actually needed to see the full impact and effect of dairy on the PCOS. But you can 
make a beginning you can try eliminating the dairy you can try switching to plant based diets and see if it helped you let us also know in the comments in case going dairy free actually helped you so today like always if you found this information useful interesting and stimulating do not forget to share this video with your friends and family do not forget to like share and subscribe to metri and we will see you soon